Yo, what is up? It's Mike the NBA Guy here, and today I want to talk about the player who I think could be the most impactful free agent in this offseason, and that is Danilo Gallinari. Now, the 2021 offseason hype train somehow keeps getting larger, despite the fact that there's nothing going on right now. And I think that's actually part of the reason why, because when there's nothing going on, there's nothing better for the media to do than sit there and talk about where Giannis is going to go, and where this guy's going to go, and where this guy's going to go, all right? And the 2021, no doubt, it's going to be an incredible free agency class. And there are a lot of teams who are going to be doing their best this offseason to just save cap space to try and get Giannis, or to try and get some of these other potential free agent star players. All right, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George could both potentially leave if the Clippers fuck up this season like they did last season. It's going to be crazy. However, this offseason has some slept-on players who are going to be huge, okay? Um, another one outside of Gallo, uh, who I would say is a really big name, is probably um, David. Uh, sorry, Davis Bertans. All right, the dude is one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. I would not be shocked if he gets like a $15 million contract for somebody long-term. God, I wish he was on the Sixers because I cannot imagine a better power forward to put with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. However, he's probably going to get a big contract this offseason. Or even more possibly, he might sign a one-year deal and then go somewhere else. But, um, man, if the Lakers could get their hands on him, that would be amazing. Even if Anthony Davis wants to play power forward. Uh, I don't know. He's just, he's, he's a huge, huge free agent. But he's not who I'm here to talk about today. Hey, debatably the best free agent who I expect to legitimately leave their team this offseason because, like, I don't expect Anthony Davis to go anywhere, could be Danilo Gallinari. All right, Gallo is an amazing player. Looking at his stats for this season, uh, 19 points a game, 40% from three, 44% from the field. All right, he got to the free throw line about five times a game and shot almost 90%. Uh, five rebounds, two assists, which is pretty pathetic, one steal. All right, not like world-shattering numbers outside of scoring. However, definitely a very, very good scorer, and his numbers this year were certainly no fluke. He's been putting up numbers very similar to this ever since 2016. All right, around 40% from three on around five attempts a game. This year was his career-high seven attempts a game from three, like I said, 40%, and, you know, just generally a very efficient, very good scorer. All right, fantastic player for any team, and... Now, I take this with a grain of salt, okay, because NBA players, I don't care how much you say, you're not doing it for the money. People want their money, okay? Players want their bag. But, with a bunch of teams saving up money for the upcoming season, and the league being wide open right now, and the fact that the cap space is a little bit weird this year with all the China shit going on and all the coronavirus stuff, it is... A little more believable than usual when a player says they're not in it for the money this offseason because it's entirely possible for Gallo to sign a one-year deal knowing that the cap's lower this year and it's probably going to raise in the 2021 offseason that maybe he signs a less expensive contract for one year and then goes after a bigger bag next season. So if you haven't heard, Gallinari has said that he's not in it for the money this offseason. He wants to go to a contender. And... Gallo, in my opinion, could absolutely create the favorites, um, create the team being a favorite for winning the championship next season because he's an incredibly talented player. All right, he's not quite an all star, but he's a very, very good scorer. Um, he doesn't turn the ball over a lot. He's not a great defender or anything, but as far as I can tell, he's. I, I'm not going to pretend I've watched a ton of Gallo or OKC this season, but. You know, he seems to be, like, about an average defender. He's a bigger guy, maybe slightly below average. I'd, I'd probably say about average as a defender, you know? So he's not, like, a big negative on that end. <coughs> Sorry. Um, just all around a very good player, great shot creator and scorer, and that is something a lot of teams could use, all right? If the Sixers could get him with a mid-level exception, which I don't believe they will, uh, that would be fucking incredible. However, the teams who I really think could go after him 
Um, there's three big ones. All right, I would say the three big ones are the Lakers, the Heat, and the Bucks. These are three teams who would absolutely kill to have Gallo on their roster. All right, with LeBron James playing point guard, having Gallo on the Lakers as the small forward, as opposed to like Kyle Kuzma or I'm trying to think who they even play, Markeith Morris, like. Gallo would be a massive upgrade. He would instantly be the third best player on that roster. No question in my mind. And just having another dude to create shots um, on his own a little bit when LeBron is off the floor uh, and somebody outside the post, since Anthony Davis, you know, very good perimeter player for someone who realistically should be playing center. But, like, he's still not, a, you know, a three-point sniper or anything. He's still not a guy you want taking people off the dribble. All right, I don't care what Lakers fans say. There's no way in hell I want Anthony Davis taking somebody off the dribble as opposed to sitting his ass in the paint. He would be huge for them, okay? And getting assists from LeBron James, he would probably shoot like 43% from three. Like, not even joking. With the gravity of LeBron and Anthony Davis, he would absolutely have the best efficiency numbers of his career, I believe. That would be amazing for them. The Heat are obviously trying to go after Giannis next offseason, but that doesn't mean they're going to stop themselves from contending this year. And like I said, one-year deal for Gallo, I could absolutely see them clearing up cap space, giving him a little more than a mid-level exception, which could be enticing. Um, I don't know how much money, how much less money I should say he'd really be willing to take. Like, would he really take a mid-level exception? Because I feel like Gallo is absolutely a player worth something around 20 million a year, 18 to 20 million, which like just in the modern NBA, I think he's absolutely worth that because everybody wants a shot creator like that on their team. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, everybody wants a player like that on their team. You know, they want somebody who can create their own shot, who can score very efficiently at will. And the dude can also, he can be a catch and shoot guy because he's such a great three point shooter. He's just fantastic for any modern team. I could see, you know, if the Heat can free up cap space, give him, you know, a double-digit salary, maybe like $12 million, maybe even up to $15 million. I don't know their exact salary situation, um, and I don't uh, understand how the salary works, like how the cap situation in the NBA works well enough to give a definite amount. But, you know, if they can give him double digits when everyone else can just give him like 7 or $8 million for a mid-level exception... You know, that could be very enticing for him for a one-year deal. They could go. They're going to be a fantastic team next year, all right? They're absolutely going to be, at the very least, borderline contenders this upcoming season, if not legit contenders like they were this previous season. You know, people are done sleeping on the heat. They That could be huge for them to have Gallo, who could help counter the fact that Jimmy Butler is not the world's greatest three-point shooter and Bam Adebayo is not. Just be absolutely amazing for them, all right? And the other team, and the team that, from a basketball standpoint, I would most like Gallo to be on, but from a Sixers fan standpoint, I would least like him to be on, uh, that is the Bucks. I don't know, I know the Bucks got a tight salary cap right now, but if they could find a way to free up space for a mid-level exception for Danilo Gallinari. First of all, I can't imagine any universe where they don't take it because they are desperate for another shot creator outside Giannis and Chris Middleton. Because as it is right now, they just don't have anybody, really. They really don't have anyone who's going to be scoring on their own. Uh, besides Giannis, who we've seen can be stopped in the last two playoffs. And I expect him to improve this offseason, but the point stands. And Chris Middleton. And Chris Middleton's just one dude, and he's not, like, elite, you know. Chris Middleton is a very good shot creator on his own. Very good shooter. Very good player. You know, I would I have no issue with him being an all-star, okay? He's an all-star level player. However, he's not Bradley Beal. You know, he's not Beal. He's not, um, he's not like, I don't know, who am I even trying to think of right now? He's not like Damian Lillard or Devin Booker, okay? He's not like a, an elite player at creating his own shot or anything. Gallo isn't like the best in the league or anything. He's not like those three guys I just named, but I would say he's a little bit better than Chris Middleton at it, and that is huge on a team who is desperately trying to keep Giannis. And uh, frankly, if you get Gallo on that team, a trio of Giannis, Gallo, and Chris Middleton is absolutely terrifying, okay? Having Gallo playing shooting guard, first of all, that's a very big team, too, 
which uh, makes them harder to guard in this modern NBA. I've also seen stuff about Gallo going to the Warriors, which is definitely possible, but I just don't think it's as interesting as the other teams in my mind. I don't know why, I just I just don't think it is. But uh, him going to the Bucks is scary. That's a scary team. That is absolutely, I, in my opinion, that instantly makes them the title favorites. Because it would be huge to get another guy besides Middleton next to Giannis who can create his own shot and score very efficiently. So, yeah, we'll see where Gallo goes. We'll see how low of a price he's really willing to take. Because maybe maybe it was a lie. You know, maybe he's over-exaggerating and I'm looking into it more than it is. And he still wants like $20 million a year. And, you know, he, he said it's not for the money, but he was just kind of full of shit. And he is going to go to a team who can pay him what he's worth. Or at least very close to what he's worth. But uh, I think those three teams are certainly the most interesting uh, destinations for him to land. And also probably the most likely. Um, I think the Warriors are in there too. But I think the other three are slightly ahead of them. Uh, also because of fit. Because those other teams need shooting a little more than the Warriors do. Even the Heat because of Bam and Jimmy. They need shooting. So, yeah, um, that's just my thoughts on Danilo Gallinari. I think he's a very interesting free agent, and I'm pretty excited to see where he goes this season, even if I am a little scared, especially if he comes to the Eastern Conference. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel, um, and check out some of my other videos. So, yeah, thank you.